I'm going to try and get a lot done today. Um, to start with, these are almost complete. These are my cigar rests that I've been working on. So I'm just going to uh, do another coat of shellac. And then um, depending on how that dries, I might have to wet sand them. Or not wet sand them, excuse me. Uh, just lightly sand them with maybe 220 or 320. And then possibly give them one more coat after that. And then those are going to be ready to go. Um, additionally, um, what I'm going to try and get done is one of the groups I'm a member of on Facebook. And hopefully you can hear me. I've got the heater on, so it's kind of hard to... It's real noisy in here right now. One of the groups I'm a member of on Facebook is about hand tools. And, um, you know, woodwork by hand, stuff like that. So one of the members said that his preferred technique and what he claims to be one of the classic methods is to um, retreat your planes with uh, equal parts of what you've got here, the cider vinegar. Well, let me, let me step back. I'm assuming it's equal parts. I asked, he did not respond. Uh, so I'm gonna try equal parts myself. Cider vinegar, turpentine, boiled linseed oil. So I'm gonna wipe that on. I've got a couple planes that need to be restored. That big guy back there. And this closet right here full of them okay so you probably can't see that because i got really bad lighting in my garage right now but the two that i'm going to focus on today are get out of the way these two right here that i found at a dealer an antique dealer in utica new york they were extremely rough condition so far all i've done is wipe them down with some murphy's oil soap um, you can see actually when you compare them to another one that's in a better, better condition. Okay. Um, the difference, this one's a slightly better condition. Okay. I don't know if anything has been done to it. The previous owner took a lot better care of it than the previous owner took of these ones. So, uh, I'm going to, you know, to take the iron back out. I've already cleaned the iron and sharpened it a little bit. It's pretty good. But you can see it's really rough. So almost stained. So I'm going to go over it with the uh, cider vinegar, turpentine, and linseed oil. And then. Okay, so um, what I'm going to be doing now is. I probably mentioned these uh, earlier in this video or other videos, depending on how I edit this. Um, I got these planes um, a couple months ago at an at a antique dealer down in. Uh, about two hours south of me here, and they were, you know, left outside, exposed to the elements. They appear to be mm, somewhat of a matching set. They're both made by Sargent. Uh, let's see if we can read them without dropping them. And they both say 663. Uh, I don't know really much about wood planes, uh, molding planes, so maybe that means they are a matching set. I don't know. Or maybe that was just the previous owner, which is probably more likely, because um, one of the things about these is the previous owners, you know, back 100, 100 something years ago, used to uh, stamp their logo because there's another six right there into all of these. That was an eight, so maybe that's different. I don't know. So I'm not sure how well you guys can see this. My uh, video has been uploading to 1080, except for the last one, only uploaded to, you know, four, 460 or something or whatever that 400 level is i don't really know why so um so anyway what i'm talking about so i've already cleaned up the irons i'm gonna take the irons out uh one of the groups i'm a member of on facebook deals with old tools uh, hand planes restoration stuff like that so the guy recommended uh what he, what he claims he does all his tools with was uh linseed oil turpentine and cider vinegar um i'm gonna go with equal parts and we'll, we'll see what happens uh the two of these together would probably cost me five bucks. So I really don't have much to lose. They're in good condition anyway. And nothing here is really going to ruin them. It's just whether or not the final quality is what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, I mentioned also a couple times a friend of mine, uh, as kind of a favor and, you know, we we're kind of, uh, in debt to each other, trading stuff back and forth with each other. So he saw an opportunity to buy me a giant box of wooden hand planes and took it. So, 
This one was in there. Unfortunately, there's no iron in there because it's really cool, and I really actually need this profile um, for some of the projects I've been planning. You can see that it's not a flat bottom like a traditional, like a standard plane. So, like I said, unfortunately, there's no iron in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, treat this one at the same time, but it's really dirty because it, I don't know where it was kept, and since I've had it, it's just been sitting in my garage, and I've been using the table saw a lot lately, which creates just an absolute ton of dust. So I'm going to wipe this one down with either a pure turpentine, because I haven't tried that yet, or more likely denatured alcohol, which I've got sitting over here, casting a shadow on everything I'm trying to show you guys. So I'm going to wipe that down real quick, set that out to dry, then I'm going to mix this stuff up, and we'll see what happens. And you're probably going to see all of this and fast forward. So I can go back to listening to my music without any copyright violations. Okay, so um, back to normal speed. Uh, yeah, I went ahead and used my uh, card scraper to uh, get some of this, uh, some actual built up gunk on there. So it's easier just to scrape it off lightly. I don't want to go too far. I'm not trying to remove the finish, just the gunk. But one of the things I think is kind of different, and I don't know a lot about wood planes, um, but the few that I do have, this button here is wood. Um, this one is, uh, is not, it's metal. I think that's kind of neat. So, it's, uh, it's different. So I'm going to set this one off to the side to dry. Uh, let the DNH alcohol evaporate off of it. And then I am going to um, start on those other two. All right, so I've got this tray. This is a uh, drywall tray I picked up at a hardware store. It's not really too important. Just needed something that I could put this stuff in. So... Let's go with, uh, I like to go with my cleaner last. It makes cleaning up my measuring devices a lot easier. That's just me. So, we'll start with, um, I guess we might as well start with the vinegar first. Because the linseed oil is going to stick uh, to the measuring device, measure, my measuring cup here. Um, it's real cold. I'm just going to go with, um, sorry, let me back up. Okay, so this is a quarter cup. I'm gonna go with a, I'm gonna go with a quarter cup to start with, um, and a smaller tray. My original intent with this was I was gonna actually bathe the the plane in it, but uh, with this volume, I'm not really gonna have the. Uh, it's not gonna work. So. Um, all right, so it's really cold where I'm at right now, and my garage gets below freezing unless I'm in here with the heater on. So what I've been doing is I've been storing all my finishes, glue, all that stuff in the front porch of my house because nobody uses it, um, and it's not really... It, it can get below freezing, but not nearly as bad as what would get in the garage when the, you know, the temperature outside is below 20 degrees. So what happened yesterday when I was working on something, or excuse me, Wednesday, um, it was so cold that the mixture I had, the boiled linseed oil wasn't even diluting. It was just like tar. 
So I moved them into my dining room. So yeah, I've got a bunch of finishes in my dining room. Um, and I could tell it was cold because as I was applying it, just from this little tray right here, I was losing feeling in my fingers. It smells weird. All right, so we got equal parts cider, boiled linseed oil, and turpentine. Clean this up. And get a rag. I need stir sticks. That's something I don't have. I need stir sticks. I need to go through some scrap wood, cut them into tiny little splinters, and make stir sticks. I've got plenty of wood to do that. I really just need to uh, stop saying I need to do that and actually just do that. So my stir stick work around. In the meantime, some safety wire with uh, that I just cut and, and twisted together. So we'll see if this works. And it's recyclable. Use this over and over. It's such a bizarre smell. I probably should be wearing my uh, protective mask right now, but you wouldn't be able to understand me. All right, so let's see what happens here. Smells so weird. It's cider vinegar. So I'm getting the same results though uh, as I was getting the other day with that what I thought was boiled linseed oil, where I can see you probably can't, but I can see something beating up on here, and I can see it in my bowl here as well. I can see it separated, the droplets of oil, like when you see like vegetable oil and salad dressing, stuff like that, how it's separated, not blending. Um, and I've never had that issue before. When I do my friction polish for the lathe, it's equal parts shellac, boiled linseed oil, and denatured alcohol, and I don't get that. It'll separate while it's sitting, but not when I shake it up and I'm using it. It's all, it's all blended. Here, I'm not getting that. It's, it's definitely separated. And I can see droplets on the surface of the wood. So, um, all right. So the vinegar and the turpentine obviously is going to dilute it. It's, the idea is that it's thinning it out, and that the wood is drinking it back up, rehydrating it. That's the point of this recipe here. Uh, so this is actually going to take several applications. You're probably not going to see all of them. Um, you'll see the first one, and then you'll see the end, and I'll tell you how many was in between. Alright, I'm going to get these out of the way, let them start to uh, dry. I'm not going to let them dry like this, but I just want them to uh, not get mixed up. So I'm going to move these out of the way, let them soak for a while. I'm going to come back and I'm definitely going to do this um, one or two more times to these. I'm going to work on that, uh, that contour plane in the meantime. Okay. 
these gloves on, I don't want to touch my uh, remote to start and stop the uh, filming, so it's challenging here. And the uh, wax paper's definitely had enough. I'm just going to dunk that in there. It's small enough. We'll see. I'm not sure how how it's going to come out. Um, not particularly impressed yet, but it's just the first coat. So, I don't know. I think I can live with this. All right, we're trying this again. Um, I deleted a lot of videos from the card earlier, and for some reason... It still said it was full and then it stopped recording as I was talking to you. So there's two videos I'm filming here at the same time. One of them is the restoration of these two, three, these three hand planes. And the other one is at 71 and a half. Okay. So um, both of these are going to go through the same process. For the hand plane watchers, um, I started this on Friday and then um, I applied two wipe on coats of the cider vinegar the turpentine and the boiled linseed oil i wiped it on and it looked okay but i wasn't getting the results i wanted to get maybe it just wasn't fast enough for me i don't know so i added a lot more uh this time around i did a i think a quarter of a cup last time it's a little over a half a cup of each ingredient this time and i'm just going to soak them um i was real nervous about getting these wedges mixed up but as you can probably see on the video they're completely different sizes there's no way i'm going to do that so I'm just letting them soak. I'm going to let them soak for a couple more minutes. I'm going to flip them over and keep that going. So, um, the few minutes of these things soaking turned into many, many minutes. So, I flipped them over and I did only soak the back side of them for a couple minutes. Um, and now I'm struggling for space because I'm trying to move on with other projects and I'm getting backed up here. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I already pulled those knobs out from earlier uh, and that tote. So, now I'm going to pull the... Uh, planes out and let them uh, kind of settle in for a little bit hold on you know what yeah I can see no I can't you know what maybe I can maybe I can't let me look at the other side I wasn't sure see that dark line right there I thought maybe that because obviously angry is going to soak in more I thought maybe that's where it was soaking well let's see what the other side has um yeah, you know what? That's probably from soaking it right there. They're both at the same line. So that's what happened by soaking it. You can see the difference in the the color in there. I'm not sure how well my lighting is. Um, I've got just perpetually bad lighting in the garage, or it could just be my eyes. So you can see it here. Um, and you can kind of see a line along here. And it does correspond with the end grain. But at the same time, you, know, you can see it on here too. Uh, I don't know if that was already there because I didn't really notice that. I'm going to have to go back and look at the video now. Um, I was talking to a guy that lives near me that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not, you know, many thousands of uh, antique planes that he's been collecting his whole life. Um, metal ones, wooden ones, everything. And I was talking to him one day, and he was pointing out that the British planes are typically a lot darker than the American planes, despite being both made by... Made, made out of beach, I should say. And he said a lot of people believe that the darker ones are actually the older ones. And he was pointing to a light-colored one that he had, and he was saying how that one is actually much older than the dark dark one next to it. And the difference was that the dark one was British, and that their technique was different in that they soaked the plane in boiled linseed oil rather than just applying it to the outside like the American plane makers do. And that is what gave it that darker appearance, um, which may or may not have a factor in their longevity. Now, I've got a joiner that is very dark, and it is British. And I was like, yeah, you know, I can see that. And I see a lot of the uh, 
jack planes. I've got a couple jack planes somewhere around here. They're a lot lighter in shade, and those are um, sergeants like this one was is. This is a sergeant, which is an American company. So I'm just wiping off the excess um, the inside of the mouth. I'm not really going to be able to get to. Um, because it is so cold here, the garage is only heated when I'm in it uh, with, a, with a kerosene uh, salamander. So these probably are going to take a while to dry. I'm probably, I thought about it, I'm probably not going to take them into the house um, to dry. There's just no, no urgency with it. I'm just going to wipe them down as much as I can and get the, uh, as much surface oil off as I can and let it soak in the rest and I'll come back and wipe off the rest. Um, and this, as far as I know, at this point, I believe I'm going to be done with the process on these planes. So the next time you see them, they will be done. So that was two wipe on applications, just wasn't doing it for me. So then I just decided to go ahead and soak them. And they've actually been soaking for probably over half an hour now. Um, I got busy, I got distracted. I've got my new oily rag container, which the video went up this morning, so you can check that out. It's not woodworking, I know. So, put this down. Look inside and see the early construction there. Whatever the end results, these are a thousand times better than what they looked like before I started. Um, when they were just dry and pale. So, yeah, these are definitely, I definitely like the way these came out. This guy's still very wet. I need a dryer towel to wipe it off. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm gonna keep drying that off. Um, as I said earlier, I'm, I got this uh, marking gauge and uh, some other stuff here that I'm just gonna I'm gonna drop in and, and, and let that soak. Uh, it's a pretty nice marking gauge. I got it for like 20 bucks. Pretty happy with it. It's a uh, mortise gauge, so it's got the uh, double pins. And then I've got these two uh, old triplanes. Unfortunately, this one was way too rusty to save, um, but uh, th this one I'm pretty happy with. That one's pretty good. I don't remember where I got each of them. But I'm just soaking them, see what happens. Uh, never know. Anyway, back to what we're talking about. So these planes, I'll probably throw this in here too. Take these wages out, dry them off. I already pulled the knobs and the uh, tote out. Just let them soak for a little bit. I'm gonna let them dry, and then I'm gonna coat them with a layer of shellac. It's been several days. It is now the following Friday. Uh, last time we looked at this was on a Monday. So um, I think I'm gonna be done with these for now. Um, nah, I have no plans on doing anything else with them. So. They've sat for several days. They probably sit for a couple more days for the lens to dry. Um, I'll post the pictures of them. Hopefully, uh, uh, I was able to get a good before and after. But I do believe they uh, they look 100% uh, better than what they did before. Um, so that was two coats of just wiping it on, and then uh, when I came back to it several days later, I just went ahead and dunked them in here and let them let them soak for a couple minutes. I let them soak uh, standing up. For a while, um, the original video, you might have been able to see a, a darker line here. Um, since they sat out to dry, that line is kind of evened out and it's not as noticeable anymore. Um, but they look better, they feel better, they don't feel like a dried out piece of wood anymore. Um, I definitely uh, do like the end result here. Um, 
I wish there was a way that you could feel the difference as well. Um, and just a quick date on the other ones, I went ahead and started throwing a bunch of other stuff through here. Um, Bloyd Lindsay Oil does darken rosewood, so um, I don't necessarily know that I feel a difference here. I, I definitely like what happened, um, but it darkens rosewood up quite a bit. So this, this was actually pretty dark to begin with, so it just made it a little bit darker. Um, I posted a question to a group that I'm, several groups actually, that I'm a member of, uh, talking about this project and asking if doing tongue oil instead of boiled linseed oil or teak oil would uh, not darken the wood as much. And uh, being Facebook, I've gotten many, many, many likes um, and only one comment. And the only comment was from who I personally believe is the, uh, the group's troll. Uh, I posted the picture of those, uh, the knobs from the 71 and a half and the uh, World War II Stanley. And he just pointed out those knobs don't look like rosewood to me. And I said, yeah, I know. That's what I wrote in the description. So, um, so no help there. But uh, this, so this is that uh, coving plane, I guess you would want to call it. Um, it was already kind of clean looking to begin with, but it's definitely a lot more vibrant and uh I should have weighed these ahead of time to see how much uh, saturation changes the weight on them. I got several more to do, so maybe I'll do that. Um, this is an antique scraper. I went ahead and um, cleaned up the bottom of it a little bit, um, discovered some worm holes in there, um, chamfered the edges, and then soaked this one. Um, really do want to see what this one looks like in the end. It looks like it, it just holds a, a single, single iron. Uh, not your typical double iron like what this one is. This is one I actually already uh, fixed up some in the past. I just went ahead and uh, uh, took a cabinet scraper or a card scraper and, and scraped off some of the gunk that was on the outside and, and dipped this one as well. Um, I'd already cleaned up the bottom of it. And then uh, and then uh, last one I did was uh, actually two, two more things. I already put the marking gauge away. Marking gauge, I just wanted to kind of... Uh, Put some life back into it, uh, and it, and it did a great job. But there's another rosewood one that's a little bit darker. Um, this rebate plane with the fence, I took the wedges out. These, there's two wedges here. There's obviously this wedge here, and, and I soaked the whole thing, and uh, it, it came out pretty good too. Um, probably could have escaped a little bit more gunk off there, like some paint spatter or something. Um, but this is really cool too. It's a good simple way to um, just just clean them, rehydrate them, and keep them from deteriorating worse okay so like this one here's got the crack in there that drying effect and, and the aging that's what i was trying to stop and i feel pretty good that that that's what happened so uh, it's definitely a technique i would recommend so that was equal parts boiled linseed oil turpentine and um cider vinegar okay now, i'm not sure if the cider vinegar how much that helped but that's what the recipe I saw said, so I tried it. You know, it's only $2 at the store for like a gallon of it, so uh, it was worth the risk. Um, I've got a bunch more planes. I'm going to do that, and I've got some Stanley, um, more Rosewood stuff. And I'm going to try that with uh, teak oil or um, a uh, tongue oil. Sorry, I already forgot it. Huh. Teak oil or tongue oil, which I have teak oil right now. I don't have any tongue oil, so that's probably what it's going to be. Um, the example is going to be this Type 4, number 8 that I have. Um, very dark already, very gunky. It's got a lot of grime and grit all over it. I haven't cleaned it yet. I'm going to clean it with some citrus degreaser, and I'm going to apply that technique to these knobs. Obviously, this one's broken, um, but I'm just going to clean them up and, and see what happens. And then eventually, I'll decide whether I want to go find an original or make my own for this one. Um, so... That's what the process is. Again, this is what we started with and very happy with the end result. So like, subscribe, tell your friends, check out the Facebook page, all of that. Thanks for watching.